This episode of Hawaii's Best is a special one, and it kicks off our month-long support of local businesses in Hawaii. Today, we start off with a great one, an artist from the island of Maui in Lahaina. And we're talking all about the art district in Lahaina, but also how this artist came to call Maui home, what led him and his family there. But if you're listening to this and it is on September 9th, so September 9th through September 13th, we're going to be giving away one of his paintings to a lucky Hawaii's best listener. So you're going to want to stay tuned to this one. I don't do this often, but you're going to want to stay tuned until the end because I'm going to tell you how to enter to win an amazing original painting from Daryl Millard. Stay tuned because this is an epic one. Here we go. Welcome to Hawaii's Best Travel Podcast, where we help you prepare for your next trip to Hawaii. Discover the experiences, businesses, and stories that make Hawaii the Aloha State. And now your host, Brian Murphy. Aloha and welcome to another episode of Hawaii's Best, where we help prepare you for your next trip to Hawaii. And we don't know when that's going to be yet, but we are still hopeful and dreaming of Hawaii. The latest from Hawaii right now is Oahu specifically is on their second lockdown. So this current lockdown is a two-week lockdown. That's how the, the first one started, and it just kept getting extended. So curious to see what uh, the leadership is going to do this week, the week of this recording, when it gets released, to see if they're going to extend the lockdown. Uh, my gut is that they are going to. But um, who knows, because it's been a lot of ups and downs. The results that have come back from this recent surge testing of COVID has been encouraging. Less than 1%, uh, at least the, the research that I have done, have come back positive. So in all the testing they've done, which has been pretty ambiguous in, in their testing efforts, we'll continue to keep you posted on that. That's really not the main focus of Hawaii's Best. Hawaii's Best, we exist to help you plan for your trips to Hawaii and give you the best tips and strategies when traveling to Hawaii. And obviously right now, travel is pretty much closed. So what we're doing this month, and I'm really excited about this because really this is the heartbeat of of why I started Hawaii's Best, is uh, coming alongside of local businesses, highlighting local businesses and people from Hawaii, talking about their story, what led them to Hawaii, some of the insider tips and what they found from living on the islands and from being from the islands. During this month of September, it's going to be featuring local businesses and how, wherever you're listening to this across the world, how you can help continue to support these amazing people from Hawaii and their businesses. And when travel opens up again and any updates that I feel that are really important to, you know, make sure I get across to you guys, I'm going to do that. But you can stay up to date on all that by simply going to at hawaii's.best on Instagram or just um, going to our website, hawaii'sbesttravel.com. If you're listening to this and it's on September 9th, that's the day that this episode goes live, September 9th, we're going to be holding a giveaway through September 13th. And that giveaway is going to end September 13th at 1159 p.m. Eastern Standard Time because I know there's a lot of you guys on the East Coast too who love Hawaii and I wanted to make sure we extend this all the way to that point. So at the end of this episode, I'm going to give you instructions on how to enter to win an original painting from Daryl Millard from Maui. So you're going to want to stay tuned to the end. I don't do a lot of these kind of like incentives like, hey, make sure you, you know, listen all the way through because I'm going to do this. But this one, you're going to want to make sure you listen all the way through because you're going to want to get a chance to win one of these amazing paintings. And it's not just about the painting. And I want that to, this kind of segues into today's interview. It's not just about the painting. It's about how this painting makes you feel and and what it represents. And it's like bringing a slice of Hawaii to you. I really want that for you. So stay tuned to the end to learn how to enter into that giveaway. Today's guest is Vanessa Millard, the wife of Daryl Millard. He is the artist that we're going to be talking about today. Daryl was born in Australia. He has been a professional artist for over 35 years. 
His passion for painting was apparent at an early age. We talked a little bit about that. He opened his first art gallery in Melbourne, and the gallery just exceeded his expectations. In 1989, Daryl moved to Los Angeles, where he continued to paint murals for a lot of the rich and famous, many people you know about. Vanessa kind of talks about some of those clientele. He eventually decided to paint smaller scale artwork and became known as San Diego's premier plain air or open air artist. Daryl opened his own art gallery in 2001 in Solano Beach, California, called the Daryl Millard Gallery. And as time went on, Daryl and Vanessa moved to Lahaina, Maui in 2009. He paints the natural Hawaiian world around him. Through his artistry, the spirit and beauty of classic Hawaii live in each of his landscapes. I can't wait for you to hear more about Daryl and Vanessa. So let's go ahead and let's talk story with Vanessa Millard. Vanessa, thank you so much for coming on Hawaii's Best today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me, Brian. Appreciate it. Absolutely. This is uh, this is going to be fun. And what's life like right now on Maui? We're in September right now, and uh, things have changed a lot in the last five months. But Daryl and I are we're doing good. We're changing. We're trying to stay fluid, as they say, and, and roll with the punches and roll with what's going on with the whole COVID shutdown. And uh, it's it's very different here. It's very quiet. And we're just uh, trying to make the best of the situation like, like everybody is in, in the world. Right. And being located on Maui, love to hear more about your guys' gallery in Lahaina. Is that right? Yeah, we're in Lahaina, which is on the, on the west side of Maui. It is absolutely beautiful here. We have the most spectacular sunsets. And of course, because it's so beautiful... It's also where the Ali'i were, the kings and queens of Hawaii. And we have a lot of historical Hawaiian sites here. But also, it's a huge tourist town, big art market, lots of art galleries. And it's, it's a big tourist town. And so it's really quiet right now. The, the gallery in Lahaina. Yeah. Now, Front Street, and that whole area is such a huge art district. Yes. What was your guys' story in getting connected into that area? Your, maybe your journey to Hawaii, but specifically to uh, Lahaina. Our journey to Lahaina has been um, by way. We started out in Australia. Then we went, we moved to California over 30 years ago. We are in California where Daryl was painting landscapes of California. But he's always loved the islands. When he was 21, he lived in Fiji for about six months. Then he always would come over and do painting trips in Hawaii when we were in California. He's been selling and painting Hawaiian landscapes for over 20 years. And then when 2009 happened, it was just everything kind of clicked into place. And it was a really good time for us to move and live here permanently. So we've been here for a little bit over a decade. Lahaina was just a natural draw for us because it's a huge art town. It's been a massive collection of galleries and artists for decades and decades. So it was just a natural gravitation for us to come here. Plus, it's absolutely beautiful. It's just so pretty. Yeah. And Daryl's journey as an artist, we were talking off air a bit. You guys had a gallery in San Diego. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Daryl's always been in other galleries, but in 2001, we decided to open our own gallery, which was called the Daryl Millard Gallery. And we opened it two days before September 11th, 2001. So that was a massive shock, you know, for the whole country and then for us personally and business. But, you know, we made it through it. And just like the rest of the country did, we pivoted and changed and and the gallery was really successful. We were there for many years until we moved here in 2009. And now something new's come up. Right. So we're moving and changing with that. And what's the natural gravitation during this whole thing is moving online, you know, really selling from the website and through Instagram and Facebook. And then we have very, very, we're very, very blessed to have an amazing collector base, people that have bought Daryl's art for decades. And we get new collectors and then the old collectors buy and then the new collectors come in. And we have a family of collectors. We have an amazing group of people that are super loyal and they keep supporting Daryl's art. And they're just, we wouldn't 
be here if it wasn't for them. We're so, so grateful. That's incredible. You you kind of skated over a lot of life events there. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you're talking about pivoting, about adapting. I mean, there's three huge world life-changing events that you've experienced as a business owner. 9-11, yep. um, 08, 09. Yep. And now this present moment. How have you guys, you and Daryl, talking about mindset, talking about persistence, what keeps you guys driven despite the good, the bad, the ugly? What keeps you guys driven and focused? It's really important to me and to Daryl, the power of prayer and the importance of being grateful. You know, gratitude is just an amazing thing. It changes everything from your perspective. So everything can stay the same on the outer, but the way that you're reacting to it or not reacting to it completely changes for a positive, more resourceful, more productive way to deal with things. And just just to humble yourself, you know, to God and to pray and to ask for what you need to ask for what others need for them, for what the world needs. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. Um, that's always our go-to. And then being grateful. There's nothing more powerful than the attitude of gratitude. I love that. You have to keep going. You have no choice. Right. There's no, there's no, it's not a, you know, I mean, there is a choice, I guess, but if you give up, then you fail. It's okay to try something and have it fail. That's still a good thing. Mm -hmm. The worst thing to do is to do nothing. So we just, you know, keep trying, keep thinking, we brainstorm. Whenever big events happen, we get out our whiteboard. So funny, the same whiteboard that we used when we eventually decided to move here in 2009, we pulled it out in March of this year and we keep revisiting it and coming up with new ideas and writing down like, where should we go? What should we do with regard to the direction of the business? And we just keep pivoting i mean the, why we do what we do i mean family right you know you, you have to you have to take care of your kids our kids are adults now but you know once you've done that for a couple of decades you really know how to work and to fight and to have courage courage is not having no fear courage is just getting up and getting it done no matter how you feel right maybe pivoting even a little bit into daryl and his journey as an artist and I'm sure that there have been struggles and failures and accomplishments throughout that journey as an artist, but maybe take us back a little bit. How did Daryl get into painting and get into even discovering that he had this incredible gift? Yeah, Daryl's journey's been unique like like everybody. Every person on this planet is unique and has their own special journey. He started out in Melbourne, Australia, and he can remember his easel in his kindergarten class. He was <laughs> always driven to paint. And when they were on vacation, they would have uh, camping trips once a year during the summer. They would go to Rye and they would camp on the beach. And he can remember buying himself an easel, a painting easel at 10 years old and then taking it and just setting it up and painting. He's always loved it. After he graduated high school, he went to art college. But the emphasis at that time was really heavy on modern art just didn't fit with him at that time in his life. So then he went and he apprenticed to do Greek iconography in churches with Takis Abitsis, a Greek gentleman. And so he learned how to do that. Then he did some design work. He did murals, a lot of big murals for commercial and residential homes. We got married, we moved to California and he continued to do all the murals. We did a lot of big houses in Bel Air and Beverly Hills and some quite famous people. He worked on Jay Leno's house. He did some work in Jennifer Anderson's house at the time. And then he decided that he wanted to do plein air painting. He'd always done a lot of landscapes in his murals, mm -hmm. but he just wanted to paint the California landscape. And so he would just go off and paint plein air, which is open air, basically. You set up your easel and you paint what you see on site. Okay. And that's how he started painting California landscapes. And then from that, that was a tr natural transition for him because he just loves the islands. It's a deep, deep connection to island life. 
and the islands. So then he would fly over and he would paint Tahiti, all the islands of Hawaii. We were selling in all different galleries at that time. And then um, we would sell California and Hawaii paintings in our gallery in California. And then when we moved here, we pretty much uh, mostly sell just Hawaiian landscapes now. We do if somebody asks us, like a collector wants a California piece or to commission a California landscape, then he'll do it. But most people, they want Hawaii. Right. And, you know, someone's listening to this right now and it sounds amazing and it's hard to to really visualize exactly what it, you know, a piece of his art. We'll link that in the show notes. So um, as you're listening right now, listen all the way through and uh, be sure to check out the show notes at the uh, at the end of this episode and to be sure to check out some of Daryl's art. But Vanessa, how how would you describe Daryl's style as an artist and maybe even more, what do people come to love most about his art, specifically about his landscape art on the islands? Most of our collectors say that when they see Daryl's art, it it's an instant recognition of the feeling. His art makes them feel how they felt when they first came to the islands, when they first got off the plane, they saw the trees, the gentle breeze, they saw the first sunset on Maui, that decompression, the relaxing paradise that they didn't even know existed. That feeling, it, it's brought back when they look at Daryl's art. He's got a very unique style of painting and it's extremely recognizable it's because his color palette is very low key Mm. like a lot of the art you see it's extremely bright and vibrant and there's a lot of color well he has color but it's a very subtle color and the palette is super subtle so and mixed with his style of being an impressionist you know the loose brush strokes it's, it makes you feel relaxed. It makes you feel connected to old Hawaii. A lot of people think that they're old, his paintings, but they're not. They're all current. They just have that vintage feel to it. I definitely got that feeling the first time I, I went to and saw your guys' gallery online. This, that kind of old Hawaii, even some of the the scenes, the scenes and some of the landscape that he was painting and, and portrayed in a way, it felt like old Hawaii, which was super cool. Yeah, You mentioned the term impressionist. Just unpack that word a little bit for us. So, you know, if you think about Renaissance, you know, what ha- what was happening back then, there were no cameras. So art had a very distinct purpose in culture. It was to reproduce, you know, there's a lot of religious art. It was to tell stories. It was okay. to reproduce facts and history. They would have lots of portraits of people. But now we we have cameras. So art went from being, you know, making a historical timeline to be making you feel something. And Impressionism came out of the need and the want to create an emotion and a feeling rather than to reproduce something exactly how it looks, like a photo. So Impressionism is very... The the French Impressionists were the first, and then there was a big revival of it also. That's what Daryl got into, the California Plainer Painters. They were very much influenced by the French Impressionists as well. And it was about the feeling of emotion, Mm -hmm. making you feel something. You could see what it represented. It definitely is representational. You can see, you know, what you're what you're looking at, but it also makes you feel something at the same time. It's not just about making you say, okay, that's a recognizable and it's all tight. And it looks like it was done, you know, very, very small brush strokes, very, very tight. Whereas impressionism is loose and it makes you feel a certain way. That makes total sense. Yeah, I definitely get that feeling going through your guys' gallery and seeing his work. And I'm always curious just on the kind of the, the process in creating such a piece. How would you describe Daryl's creative process or maybe kind of like a, a day in the life of Daryl getting out there with his easel. Yeah, so Daryl's favorite way is to still is to paint plain air. You know, you go out there, you're in the atmosphere, you're feeling the breeze, you're surrounded by the sunset. It's everywhere around you, and so you're not only seeing it, but you're also experiencing it. So it's easy to transfer the motion onto canvas. But then, you know, 
he can, he's painted so many, he's painted thousands and thousands of canvas. Just watching him paint, he doesn't even need a visual anymore. He sets up his easel in his studio. He used to paint on Friday nights at the gallery for people to meet him. He could set up his easel, take a bit of charcoal and sketch in a tree and whatever he was going to do. And then he just starts painting it. And he doesn't even have any visual. He's just so... Wow. It's like anybody that's really good at their craft. Yeah. You know, when you when they've done it so many times, you don't even think about it. It's just reflexive. Anybody that's good, like a musician or an athlete, they make it look easy. So he he found it easier to paint than to talk to people at the gallery. So he would set up the easel on Friday nights uh, and just paint, and then my people kind of guy. would just watch him. <laughs> yeah, just watch him paint. So that's his process. He doesn't really think about it much anymore. He just does it. Yeah. But it does always start with a desire and an emotion. Like, what is it that he wants to portray? What is it that he wants to get across to the viewer? What does he want you to feel? You mentioned Friday nights. What's that? If someone hasn't been to Lahaina on a Friday night, like what's that energy like? And I'm hopeful, you know, that we'll get back to that eventually. But what's that vibe like? Oh, it's super fun. Friday night, art night, all of Lahaina is open and all of the galleries stay open late till 10 at least. And artists that are local and live here or artists that are showing in Lahaina and then they come over and they fly over. They set up their easels and they do presentations for anybody that comes by. You know, there's wine and some poo-poos and always great music. Lots of galleries have live music. And so people would just go from gallery to gallery and meet artists and see them paint. And a lot of our collectors, um, when they visit, they always stop in for Friday night art night Mm -hmm. because that's their connection with Gerald. They like me too, but you know, you've got to see the artist <laughs> painting in live. You can't beat it. It's and so many people they they come in to visit and they watch him paint and then they end up buying it because they have such a connection. They've actually witnessed the creation of it. It's a very beautiful thing to see something beautiful, you know, created mm-hmm. in front of you. you. You take it for granted when you see it all the time. But then when somebody comes in the gallery and they've never experienced it, you just watch their eyes light up and they're just it's amazing. It's like right. watching a musician, a really good musician, create something live on stage. You can't beat that. Right. I love that. Yeah, that's well said. Now, I know a lot of people, you're dreaming about Hawaii right now, thinking about Hawaii and, you know, especially Maui. Maui is such an amazing destination with the the rich art, rich history. It's got all the resorts, but it also has a little bit of a slower pace too, as you're comparing yeah. it to like a Waikiki, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's got the best of both yeah. worlds. So what advice would you give someone? You've been on, on the island for quite a while. What, what advice would you give someone who is dreaming of coming to the islands for the visit, maybe for the first time? Well, it, it just depends what they want to experience and what their situation is. You know, if they have a family and they want to stay maybe in a condo and which has a kitchen, well, there's plenty of them on the west side. If you you know want to stay in it's your honeymoon and you just want to stay in a resort, well, there's plenty of them in the west side too, and also in my layer. It just depends. The best the best places, well, the most popular places to come and visit are always the west side of Maui, which is Lahaina, and Lahaina is large. It's not just Lahaina proper. It goes all the way up through Kanapali, Kapalua, Napili, Honokawai. It goes all the way up the west side of Lahaina and there are thousands and thousands of places to stay and they can fit every budget and every type of traveler from single people to honeymooners to families and to multiple families. Sometimes uh, people will come and they'll have, say, a 50th wedding anniversary and grandma and grandpa will rent a home and then all of the children and then their grandchildren will come and you'll have you know, 50 people in a party I'll rent a couple of houses and it's just a life event. So there's everything for Lahaina, in Lahaina for everyone. Well, what about you? What do you, what do you love most about oh, Maui? Maui's so special. I, I'm so glad that we were fortunate enough to move here and to live yeah. here. The best part for me is just walking my dog every night at sunset whether it's at Waikuli Beach or along Shark Pit Beach in Lahaina. And it's just watching the sunset. It's it's a canvas mm-hmm. that is changing before your eyes. Every night it's different. 
It just glows all over you. You know, you remember why you're here. You remember why you do what you do. And then you look around and all these people are just appreciating the same thing at the same time. It's just, it's beautiful. It's yeah. it's super special place. And the people here are amazing. Yeah. On your guys' Instagram, I see your stories and of the sunset, you walk in your dog and it's just... Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I love it because I think a lot of people right now are dreaming of Hawaii and so much, so yeah. desperately want to. It's not only a lovely, beautiful place, obviously, but th- it's this kind of escapism of, in a healthy sense, you, you take your family there, you make the memories, and there's something magical, there's something special about being on the islands that you can't put in the words unless you're actually there. And yeah. I yeah. think Daryl's art really captures a huge slice of that. When we were first starting talking, you mentioned about, you know, how you guys have pivoted and and kind of talked a little bit about this current season. But how, what do things look like right now or maybe even the, the near future as far as you can see and what you guys are doing as far as pivoting? I know you mentioned online presence, but maybe if you can speak into that um, a little bit more. Yeah, so... Uh, when the, when it first happened with the shutdown, you know, we haven't had any tourism here for five months. So, and, and so many people are, are disappointed. You know, they had trips planned and, and they've had to cancel and reschedule. So we thought, what can we do? Uh, and, you know, people are reaching out to us and asking like what's happening. So we, we decided to do a giveaway and the, the response was absolutely phenomenal. People just appreciated it so much you know, to have an opportunity to just win something and it got everybody focused on something positive and it was exciting. Plus, it's so nice to give. You know, when you give something, people are just so happy and they just open up their hearts and they just tell you things and you get to talk with them and you connect. That's another thing is that the lack of connection that we have because we can't come here. So we did that and that went really well. And then with the recent kind of going backwards with the Wahoo shutting down again, we thought, okay, let's do another one. Then it just kept snowballing. And so with regard to what we're doing, we are doing online. We're doing Instagram. We're doing Facebook. The website, since the shutdown, we have a new website that has a shopping cart in it so you can purchase online. Mm -hmm. And the giveaways and then connecting with people. And Instagram is amazing. I'm so impressed with Instagram. People just reach out to you. I had a conversation with a guy in Italy the other day and we were making jokes about the time because it was exactly 12 hours. I was in the PM and he was in the AM. It was like 2.11. And then I've had people from Germany and Australia, of course, because that's where we're from, but also England and just reaching out. I had a Russian guy reach out. People just are so desperate to connect with their favorite place on Mm. earth. I had a Japanese gentleman actually recently. He was so, so nice. So, so sweet. And he comes here every year, but this year he can't. So it's an interesting time, but we all have to just change it in the best way that we can and realizing that everybody needs connection. That's another thing I just want to put it in here real quick is that this whole shutdown, people are so focused on, you know, the COVID is it actual health, but there's so many other parts to a human being besides your physical health. There's the emotional health, there's the mental health. There's your spiritual health. There's your financial health. And those things are just as important. So connecting with people and reaching out to people any way you can is just super important. Don't wait. Don't you know? isolate mm-hmm. yourself. Just reach out and touch base with people. So yeah, on that note, we're having another giveaway. It's going to be of another beautiful uh, limited edition reproduction that Gerald made. And he makes all the frames as well. If you want a chance to win, just uh, go to your website. And- Hopefully you you have a lucky number. So if you are listening, which you are listening, but specifically if you are listening between the time that this episode goes live, which is September 9th, 2020, just want to get it all legal here. And we at Hawaii's Best are partnering with Vanessa and Daryl in doing a giveaway. Uh, This giveaway will run through September 9th through September 13th, and it'll, that's Sunday, that'll end at 11.59 Eastern time, because I know there's a lot of people out on the East Coast too, so I want to be fair to you guys. 
So the um, so what you got to do to enter, which is so generous. And Vanessa, just thank you so much for this oh, it's opportunity. A pleasure. Seriously. Love it. Love it. I'm so happy to do it. Go to hawaiisbesttravel.com slash giveaway. And there, all you got to do is enter your name and email and you are automatically entered to win this amazing giveaway. And to get a clear um, perspective of Daryl's incredible art, Vanessa, where can people go to see your guys' online gallery? It is directly to our website, darylmillard.com, and I'll spell it to you so my accent doesn't mess up the words. The letters D-A-R-Y-L-M-I-L-A-R-D.com. Awesome. Yeah, you can also find us on Instagram and Facebook, and it's Daryl Millard Gallery. That's the handle. I think that's the right word for it. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll link all that. The main thing, guys, go to hawaiisbesttravel.com slash giveaway to be entered to win an incredible piece of art. And I hope as you have been listening to this, you can hear the heart behind the artist and the heart behind Vanessa. This is more than just, hey, have a have a painting because, but there, the heart behind this giveaway is truly a heart of generosity in a heart of sharing a piece of Hawaii to wherever you are right now. So this is an extension of aloha, if you will. Absolutely. it's an, That's what we called it, the, an aloha giveaway, totally. Yeah. Well, Vanessa, thank you so much for coming on today. Always a pleasure. Thank you for having me. It's my very first podcast. <laughs> this is good. So I hope everybody just forgive me for not, no. for not being so good at it. I can't wait to be back on Maui again. Come and see us. Be yeah. Able to see you guys. Yeah. Yeah. You can see Daryl paint and we can have a glass of wine or a beer or a Mai Tai. Listen to some Hawaiian slack key music. The best. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you so much for listening today. And if you are wanting to enter in for the giveaway, you can simply go to Hawaii's Best Travel dot com slash giveaway and you can go ahead and enter in your email there for a chance to win we'll link that in the show notes as well the show notes you can simply click on a link below wherever you're listening to this episode or you can go to hawaii's best travel dot com slash episode 39 what i love most about my time with vanessa in talking about their journey in maui to maui and now in maui was just this overwhelming vision of what Daryl and Vanessa wanted. And they went after it. Despite circumstances, they found ways to pivot, to adapt, to change. And I think that's just a great example for all of us. No matter what your passions are, no matter what your vision is for your life, sometimes things don't go to plan. And it's that being able to adapt in the moment and being able to continuing to plan ahead, continue to have that vision, but also to be not afraid to take chances and not afraid to pivot when you need to adapt. So I th- I just thought that was really cool to hear that story. If you found value from today's conversation, I'd love to hear from you. You can just uh, leave a rating and review below. That would be amazing. I totally appreciate that. So more than that, I appreciate you. And I know your love for Hawaii is great. And I know many of us can't wait to get back to the islands or can't wait to travel to the islands for the first time. And I'm hopeful soon that day will be here. We'll let you know when it is. But until then, be well. Aloha. Thanks for listening to Hawaii's Best Travel Podcast. To stay up to date on future episodes, be sure to subscribe. For more information to help you plan your next trip to Hawaii, visit hawaiisbesttravel.com.